What is up? It is your girl Sherry, and welcome back to episode number six, which sounds so wild. Y'all gonna get tired of me saying that because I really cannot believe that all of this is happening, okay? But you are at episode number six of God Told Me to Do It, the podcast. And today, I decided to bring on my friend who was so clutch today because <laughs> I called her like two hours before we were supposed to film this, okay? But I was reading Ezekiel this morning, um, specifically Ezekiel's chapter one through three, and something in in the midst of this scripture was like, you know what? Call call your home girl. Y'all y'all can talk about this in a lot of different angles. So I want to welcome uh, <clears throat> prophetess and a uh, you know musician, <laughs> but you know by trade she is in the hair industry. She's an amazing hairstylist. So. Give it up for Miss Larissa Longley. Hey. <laughs> How are you? Good. Good. So I know this was like super last minute, but I feel like the conversation is going to be amazing because she's funny. <laughs> <laughs> she's going to be able to tell y'all some stories and pull some stuff out of y'all or out of me rather mm -hmm. that I don't think most people will. So I think it's going to be <laughs> interesting. So let's start with how did we even meet? Oh, this is exciting. Um, we met... <laughs> In cosmetology school. Yes. This is just a great way of saying hair school. Yes. Um, <laughs> but no, we met in hair school and Chevy was being Chevy <laughs> and in her leadership bag. You could all, that's like an instant thing you see about you. You definitely like great leadership skills or whatever. But were you like curling something or something? I walked past and I, I said, okay, I see you doing this. And now what's wild though. <laughs> you thought I was being funny. Well, not even that. <laughs> I went to hair school, y'all. Only just to get the license to say that I had the license. Because mind you, at this point, I had already been operating as a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. I had already been freelancing and um, had my own business with it for some years at this time. I literally went back just to get the piece of paper to, you know, set myself apart in the event that I want to do more industry stuff or become union in the future. That was one of my goals. Um, or that's one of the goals I felt like I should go after at that point in my career, which I found that I didn't want to do. That's a whole nother story. But what's interesting, I don't know if you know this, but before I decided to enroll into hair school, I had a whole anxiety attack breakdown, was actually hospitalized. Um, I had an episode where I was with my, at the time, my, um, I don't think we were married yet even. Mm -hmm. um, so my my boyfriend, <laughs> who turned out to be my husband, we were out at a CVS and I happened to walk in the store. All of a sudden, I got super dizzy and I felt like I couldn't breathe and I passed out wow. like in the store. And so the paramedics came. They took me to the hospital. They said it was anxiety. And I'm sitting in the room, him sitting at the end of the bed. And I'm like, I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't know what's next. I don't mm. know if it's makeup. I... I I need to do something. I need a plan. I need to. And in, in that room, I was like, maybe I should just go back to school. Mm. Maybe I should just go to hair school. And he was like, I don't know. And I was just like, because mind you, mm -hmm. <laughs> my husband is the GOAT because this and is some is. other backstory. This would have been the second time in our relationship where I decided to not work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just out the blue. So I'm like, I think I might want to go to hair school. And he's like, you sure this is what you want to do? Okay. I'm like, yes. The life he's of like, dating okay. creative is I, wild. Right. And he was like, literally, okay, if you can finish in a year or you commit to me that you finish in a year, I got you. And I said, okay, I'm going to make it happen. How long did it take us to finish this? It took us one year and a program designed to finish in two. We, we read all the paperwork. We looked through every loophole we could, and we went to work. We came in there, and for me, it was, I was, like, background, because I sing, dance, and act. Yes. I was um, doing hair, like, just as a means to make money so that I could pursue the things I really wanted. Mm -hmm. And my mom was the one who was, like, go and get the paper. Right. You already Like, if you're it. already going to do this. And then I was like, yeah, because then I could be background on sets, and I could see how stuff really works to decide what part of this industry I actually want to Got be it. in. Got it. And so then uh, my aunt, who's already very big in the industry, mm -hmm. was just like, yeah, I could bring you on a certain sets, but, you know, you probably need to have the license and stuff. So I was like, I knew I wanted to go to Compton. Um, I had already trying to do the stuff over the summer, yeah. but they were like, oh, we're full. And they almost sent me to a different 
They almost sent me to El Camino Torrance. Oh, God. And I was like, absolutely not. And somebody (laughs) that day um, with the teacher we had, Miss Wilkerson. Yeah. Shout out to Miss Wilkerson at Cosmic College, Cosmic College. It was a guy who was like, I'm taking care of my grandma right now, and I really probably can't do school. So I'm going to just go ahead and just drop right now. And that's how I ended up being in the same class as you. Because they were going to send me to Torrance. And I knew that, like, it was like I needed to be at Compton. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. When you start hearing the backstory of how stuff is being orchestrated, this is what makes me be like, man, you can't ever say, even when it don't feel like it, you cannot say that God hand don't be on stuff. Absolutely. (sighs) Girl. Okay, so met in hair school. I remember one day we just having a conversation. You know, everybody's starting to get to know each other. We know about people's relationships. Mm -hmm. We know about people's family. And... I'm having a conversation with Larissa one day and she's telling me about a situation she's in. And mind you, I don't even remember everything that I said. I now know that that's how the Holy Spirit works in me. Mm -hmm. Where I will say something and then somebody will come back to me and be like, remember you told me blah, blah, blah. I'm like, nah, I I really don't. (laughs) I think that's God's way of keeping me in check so I can stay humble. And I I love that for me. (laughs) So... I was telling her some things about her relationship and I was just like, no, this is this is not it. This is not that. You need to do this. You need to consider that. Da, da, da. And Larissa was like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then what did you think after having that interaction with me? Like, I, that's what I want to know. What was? How did you feel during that interaction? What did you think about me? And then after the fact. So, um, of course, when you're, number one, I'm going to be totally transparent. Mm-hmm. When God has already given you a no on something, and then he's already told you no so many times, Mm. and then you run into someone who's also now confirming the no, you're not ready to let go of the no. I couldn't be upset. as I I grew up in church, so I I kind of had an understanding Mm -hmm. of it. But when you're like, "Mm, okay, like I'm listening, I'm listening. Um, They have these things called like a, what what I've learned, it's a word, a term called a confirmed bias. Mean uh, where whatever whatever you believe about a thing, especially with Google and everything else, you can always go search up something to support what it is you believe. Oh, yeah. So after I've already known that there was a no when it came to this relationship, mm-hmm. you know, you go start talking to people who be like, well, this could be that and this could be that. Or maybe y'all could work through it. Maybe you could go through it. But in the back of my mind, I already knew like mm. this is a no. And then I was just like, OK, but then we would talk more and more and more. Mm-hmm. And I said. This woman right here is a prophet. <laughs> and, and I was called. like, never. <laughs> I said, and she's called and you're gifted. And I was like, she has to know this. It was because of the way you were so spot on to me. It was like, it was no way you didn't know. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, okay. And then God always just does this unique thing with me where he places me around people mm-hmm. um, to have like a spiritual connection because following my own way. <laughs> <laughs> had me looking like how I looked at the end of that relationship uh, crying out uh, full blown tears you know I was mm. the poster child for on Instagram you see um, when it was like Lord if this is a no tell me and it's like a stop sign laying on top of the person <laughs> you said that was that you? was me yeah for oh sure oh my god you know what's what's wild is you know Larissa you mentioned that I had to have known that about myself mm-hmm. I looking back on it now I don't feel I had the language Mm -hmm. Um, I knew that growing up, I would just know things. Like, there would be times where I would get around people and everybody, like, loves this person. And I would then tell somebody, like, "Mm -mm, I don't like them. I don't trust them. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Like, they they do this. They they are known for that. And I'm like, I don't know what it is. I don't, I just don't like it. Yeah, that discernment. And, but I never knew what that was. I thought that was normal. You know what I mean? And then there'll be times where, you know, because you weren't the first person who I've talked to regarding a relationship where everything panned out how I said it. So the first time that happened to me was with one of my best friends. And it came off as just like a conversation. Like I was just like, girl, don't do this because this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And that's going to put you in a position to make this decision. Then you're going to make this decision. And she was like, girl, whatever. And then it happened. And so a part of me kind of felt like, 
is this like a self-fulfilling prophecy because I'm speaking something over somebody, so now I've planted that seed and it's happening? Mm. Or is this me really foretelling something? Mm -hmm. So I never really kind of looked at it as a gift. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Until it started happening way too much. But there's a point in my journey where I'm now learning that because I was ignorant to it being a God-given gift, Mm -hmm. that it was easy for it to be perverted. Yes. And that's something that I'm like kind of reconciling with because I thought that this was just a natural intuition that I had. I just, I didn't know it was a God given gift mm-hmm. with a name, with a label, with a call, with a responsibility. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's the importance of knowing your identity in Christ. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where, um, even being somebody that has grown up in church, it took me a while to fully come into the know of what my identity in Christ was. Mm -hmm. And that's important because if you don't know, you'll end up abusing, unbeknownst to you, what it is God has placed in your hands. Yeah, And then not recognizing why certain people are in your life and how you're supposed to handle them and how you're supposed to be with them and what you're supposed to be doing in their lives. Um, And Mm -hmm. sometimes, even that, like some people come into your lives, like I had to realize like every guy that I came in contact to that I was able to help mm-hmm. or they were not supposed to be my man. They were supposed uh, to be my friend. And, but you know what I'm saying? If I have that, the, uh, the ability to make people feel seen or heard or yes. loved or whatever, you know, some people will take that and it'll be, you know what I'm saying? Used in the wrong way. Like, dang, yeah. she's so whatever. But, um, or friends, when they start coming to me, asking me for prayer, or can you pray over my daughter or can you pray over my son or something? And I'd be looking like, okay. Right. But if I didn't understand the power that I possessed, that God was giving me, obviously, um, yeah, I I would minimize what he called great. Mm. And it, it took me a second to to realize that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's wild because one of the words God gave me recently is that um, what will be highlighted in this season um, amongst um, believers and non-believers alike is um, identity. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I wrote down in my journal over here, I said, um, identity and the truth, identity in Christ. And I noticed, because of course, when I got this word, I don't just look at what's happening in the church or what I feel like God is saying on the church. It it also has to apply to me if you're sharing it with me. And I'm finding that. So when I saw that, I then began to look on what got me here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the issues that I've had growing up was identity. Mm. Um, I deal with a lot of, um, like, I I can't stand the way I look. Like, it started young. That's wild. I I thought that was, like, I really thought, like, I'm not attractive to certain guys because, you know, just growing up, I was not the girl that people was attracted to. Um, I always felt less than, Mm. um, I didn't have a body. I was very thin, you know, guys were one of all the curvy girls. And so looking back, I'm like, yo, like the enemy was putting holes like in my identity from the jump. And I didn't know, I thought this was just a part of growing up, Mm -hmm. you know, but I had like just, just self identity issues. Then that led to me feeling like I was less than, and then that led to me um, seeking out relationships to fill the hole because then I found that the only time guys paid attention to me was sexually. So then I felt like, oh, well, I'm going to take back my power and I'm I'm going to do what I'm going to do to you what you do to me. Mm-hmm. And so I had a whole season of like, oh, I'm, I'm going to sleep with him. Then I'm going to just flop. Mm-hmm. Never see him. Never talk to him again. See you in public. Act like don't even know, know you. you. Yeah. Like, Wow. Like to the point though, where it was just like, mm, I don't, what, what's your name? No. And they will literally be looking at me like, what do you mean? Like angry. I'm like, I don't know who you. Sorry to this man. And it was, uh, listen, <laughs> a whole season of that though. Right. Yeah. And then when I realized like, yo, God, so you mean to tell me my identity and my confidence was being attacked on purpose 
to keep me in a space to be quiet and desire to be in the background because you created me to speak up and be in the front. That is wild. So this whole time I'm like, nah, I don't like to do it. I don't like to be in the front. I don't want to be seen, which is true. It's a natural part of my Mm -hmm. personality. Like I really like to just help. But God is like, no, you supposed to talk. Uh huh. And I'm a, I'm start training you with this podcast. <laughs> That's pretty much what's happening right yeah. now. Like, because everything okay, works God. together for the, for the good, good of those to those who are called, according, called and according to His purpose. Yes, and His will, and His will. Because that's the part people always say for the good of those who love the Lord. No, no, according to according His purpose, to His purpose, and His and will. His will. Yeah. Yes. So. Yeah, man. Identity. Identity in Christ. I'm grateful that I'm finally in a season where that is a focus for me. Mm-hmm. And I am so like, I'm tunnel vision. Like, I literally only want what God has for me. Yeah. Um, uh, life, uh, life, life trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. It'll get you to that point. Mm-hmm. But for me, it is more or less like the grace and the mercy that he's given you throughout all of that. Like, throughout the journey to be like, dang, even when I was in that, you were still covering me. You were still keeping me. Girl. You were still holding me. You still loved me. You still never gave up on me. I have to now remind myself sometimes, um, especially because my physical, my physical, biological father wasn't always present. Uh, Mm -hmm. And my mom, they were married, then they got divorced. So it was a fight for me to constantly remind myself that God is a good father. Mm. and really have to sit down and say, what does it look like to be a good father? So that I could tell myself when he tells me that as a good father, how do I respond as a daughter? You're about to make me cry. How do I do that? Solomon, I think I'm going to need the tissues. <laughs> uh, for those of you that don't know, Solomon is the the, <laughs> the magician behind <laughs> the camera. Say what's up to the people really quick. <laughs> yeah, turn my mic on. What's up? Everybody? Yeah, he asked me before this episode if I needed the tissues, and I said I no. no cause, and I just cause looked she, at her. <laughs> he she was always like, laughing when she with me because <laughs> his discerning spirit said, mm, "I don't know if that's true." Mm-hmm. But um, the reason why I feel like I'm tearing up is because um, I just had a conversation yesterday with someone about my relationship with my father, mm-hmm. and my father actually passed away a month exactly after my daughter was born. Mm-hmm. And um, I was forewarned about it in a dream. He was already sick, but, you know, I knew what was coming. I knew it was very soon. Um, from the time that I got the dream to when he actually passed, it was only a week. And um, thank you very much. And so I have a very interesting relationship with my father because the thing about it was it wasn't like he wasn't present. We didn't live in the same house. So by the time, you know, I'm like seven or eight, you know, him and my mother had been split for some years. Um, They only lived together when she was pregnant with me. Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, he's always been around. But I just remember feeling like you're not here. So why are you trying to be an authority in my life? Mm. Like you're not really here to see me grow up. So you don't really have the right to tell me what I can and can't do. Mm. And I've always had that um, that attitude and that sassiness with him. What doesn't help is that me and my father are a lot alike in, <laughs> in a lot of ways when it comes to our mouth, uh-huh. like when we talk. And so I'm, I'm basically giving him the same energy without the cursing at that age. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But... He, I would just remember growing up and him telling me, like, you know, you can call me sometimes. And, like, you don't always have to call me when you need something. And I'd be like, okay. And even when I needed something, it would be like, can I, can I get $20? Can I get this? Can I get that? It was never nothing crazy. But to him, he would tell me, like, you don't always have to just call me when I need something. Like, his thing was, uh, call me, tell me something, make up something. You're going to lie to me anyway. <laughs> like, <laughs> that was his thing. Uh-huh. Um, but... I, I never really took the chance to do that. And then I remember there was a, a season where I was in college and I asked him to buy me my books that season. And he did. They were like $350. But from that moment on, whenever we would go to family functions and he was there, it first of all, he would invite me as if I was a prize. So I felt like whenever I would uh. go, it was like, yeah, this is my daughter. This is my baby. This is my oldest. But it was to show me off and then to affirm him. Mm-hmm. being good. 
So he would always be like, yeah, she's in college. I'm putting her through college right now. And I would literally tell him in front of people, Dad, you're not putting me through college. You just pay for books one semester. One. Like, don't take credit for what I'm doing. Yeah. And so to now be in the position where I'm very serious about my relationship with God, it's hard for me sometimes to look at him as a father. Yeah. Um, and to accept Jesus as a father because, one, I, it's hard for me to let go of control and to submit. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning that with my relationship with Christ and also with my marriage in a lot of ways. Like, we've been married now seven years, but I'm just now in the position like, oh, this is out of order. This is out of order. I need... Mm, uh -huh. mm, mm. And God is checking me on things. Like, yeah. the Holy Spirit is checking me in real time on things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the whole father thing has been a thing that I've been talking about the past couple of days. Cause I was like, I don't feel anything in my heart yet that would make me want to repent because I don't believe in repenting just to say, Hey, I repented for the day. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work unless it's really in your heart and God is turning your heart to do it. And I think this conversation is doing it because, um, I really do regret that I didn't honor my father how a father should be honored, even though he wasn't there for me, how a father should have been. And mm -hmm. even though I was exposed to him having a particular type of lifestyle that was very adverse to women, mm -hmm. he was very misogynistic. Mm -hmm. He was very, um, like, you are to be seen. He was very, you know, oh, you gaining weight. You ain't going to get no man like that. He was very, um, you know, so I just felt like, how am I not good enough for you but I'm good enough for you to tout as your own um, accomplishment. Mm. And I um, I didn't think that, I felt like he rested on that. I felt like he didn't have any other accomplishment in his life. It was just stuff in his past and then his children. And everything else in life, he kind of just dropped the ball. And I didn't like that about him. Um, but yeah, I think, this conversation has got me in a space now where it's like I can repent from an authentic place regarding my, me and my father's relationship. And that would then allow God in even more to be that father that I desired that all these years I said I didn't want, mm -hmm. which I, I really think I did. Yeah, because we we're all still that little girl standing there waiting for like, Daddy, pick me up. Yeah. Tell me I'm beautiful. Tell me you love me. Yeah. Um. Going back to that, with my father, um, stories are kind of similar. My dad is still here. Mm -hmm. So I do still have the opportunity and the chances that I, like, I still tell my father, happy Father's Day. Mm -hmm. And with me, sometimes I feel bad because I still intentionally go out of my way to honor him. Mm -hmm. I had to check and make sure that, like, I did it definitely because I do love him. And I've always desired that. But, like, I seen that it would make him feel very guilty. And that wasn't the goal. Right. He would always, like, apologize right after, like, oh, thanks, babe. Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, my dad still misses my birthday. He spelled my name wrong. Like, <laughs> right. I'll be like, dad, what? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> so it's like, so to me, like, you know, even when, like, crazy stuff, I always, like, make a joke out of it or whatever. But mm. I found myself in tears one day because I looked over my life and... I looked in the relationships that I've been in, some of the examples that I've had around me, um, or just the men and the men that I have seen, yeah. like represented. And I said, I don't think outside of maybe like my grandfather, but I'm talking about someone that's there like day to day. Yeah, have not experienced someone loving Larissa for Larissa, mm. and ever really experiencing that kind of love. And now I'm looking at a God who's telling me there is nothing you can do to separate my love from you. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying, how am I supposed to believe that? Mm -hmm. So I'm going through all these different things because I'm like, yeah, dad, like, I want your love. But ultimately, it's the father's love that I'm really pulling on, that I really want to make sense to me, mm -hmm. that I really want to feel, that I really want. Um, and then especially after my mom passing, yeah. because that was just like. So now I'm angry with the God I need. Yeah. Because I'm like, Lord, you have the power to heal. And you could have done this. And I believed you for it. And I fasted for it. And I prayed for it. And I was like, 
what else? And I still I still love you because I need you and I know that I need you. And yeah. I and I want to love you and still be here because I know that I want to make it to heaven because eventually I want to see you again or however that process is going to look and go. But now I have to get to know you and say, okay, so you're my father. And even when I went and I talked to my own father and I said, dad, why, why did you move with women the way that you did? Or why did you do the stuff? Mm -hmm. For the first time, my dad had a conversation with me about love only to tell me that he is now 60, some 63 years old mm -hmm. and told me it has only been up until now that he's ever understood love. Wow. That he had been hurt, that his parents were married. They had gotten divorced. Um, he had gotten married and stuff. <laughs> he got married and stuff before, um, but that he was very hurt after that. Mm -hmm. And he never properly healed. And he was like, we didn't have no, nobody was talking about therapy or anything right. like that back they then. They didn't have the language and he was like, I, and even though, and I said, well, then what made you marry my mom? And he was like, well, your grandfather was a minister and we couldn't be shacking up. Mm -hmm. So then we got, but even then it was just like, I said, well, did y'all pray together? Did y'all, you know, because I was very young. No. And he was like, I mean, we went to church and stuff, but we weren't like having a lot of those conversations. Yeah. Now, this is his side of the story. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but yeah, and he said, he was like, I, I loved your mom to the capacity in which I had the love to give, but I did not know love. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just was like. And that is probably one of the most honest mm -hmm. answers ever. I think when it comes to, um, you know, losing people, though, that you love and, and feeling like I did all the things because, God, you can, you're you more than capable. The one thing that I'm learning is that if I focus on the will of God, then I can't be angry. Mm -hmm. Because even though you can heal, you can do all this, you still have an appointed day and an appointed time for all of us. Yep. And that will supersedes me wanting this person to be here. It doesn't say like, oh, this had to happen to them as far as because people be like, it's not, it's not in God's will for children to get kidnapped, trafficked. Da -da. It's not that necessarily. It's just the fact that we all came with an appointed day and time. Yeah. How that happens, we don't have control over. Yeah. But it was the will of God for that particular soul to leave this this realm. I had to at tell that time. myself, my mom was his daughter before she was my mom. Mm, my God. She belonged to God way before I ever came into the picture. Like, we wow. are all here in transition. There's just a vehicle to get us here. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, even with Jesus, they're like, your mom, your brother, they're, your family, they're coming. To you. He's like, hold on, I'm doing the will of the Father. Like, I'm not even... <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I'm, I'm not, not they, they, they're, they're going to uh, wait. They're they're going to, you know what I'm saying? Because once you, once you are in the body of Christ, mm -hmm. you are sold out for him. You are there to fulfill girl, his will to do girl. that. That is, if you have to, forsaking all others to do, to fulfill the assignment. Yeah. And so in, in all of that, I had to say that like, okay, God will. And that's what gave me peace. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, she was your daughter before she was my mom. So you do what you want with your child. Wow. That is, oof. Child, we're going to have to uh, reel it back to something else before I get super <laughs> emotional. But you brought up something. You were saying how even in the midst of what I was practicing in the past, that God's hand was still on me. He was mm -hmm. still there. Um, that was actually a conversation that I was having on the way here mm -hmm. today in the car. Like, I was like, I don't know what to pray about today, God. I said, I feel like I've, I've said everything I need to say. I was like, so I'm just going to sit here while I was driving. And what came up was, even in the midst of you practicing tarot, even in, in the midst of you practicing mediumship, even in the practice of you studying astrology, even in the midst of you providing readings to other people, um, connecting with other people, like actively taking classes for these things to learn how to like harness these powers, right? Even on the brink of practicing a whole religion and considering like, going to get initiated into it. Like, I would mm -hmm. have to have gone to another country to do it, but I was thinking about, <laughs> I was supposed to do it in June. It was either going to be this this June that just passed or next year, June, because mm -hmm. it was going to be out the country. Um, Even in that, I was just like, Jabari, you got to go with me. He was like, I ain't doing that. Okay. So I guess you ain't doing it. Because I was like, yeah, I'm not traveling that far by myself. But long story short, in the midst of all of that, there was still something on the inside of me that was like, 
I don't feel 100% comfortable initiating into that. So I'm just going to put a pin in it. And I'm now finding like, it was like God saying, I'm going to let you immerse yourself as far as I will allow you to immerse yourself in it. Because when it's time, I'm going to snatch you out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the way he snatched me out was getting my attention by me like audibly hearing his voice in the hospital the day after I gave birth. And literally, I, I told this story on my first episode of my pod, guys, if you want to check it out. But um, I was alone in the hospital room. It got quiet. And all of a sudden, the ticking of the clock got loud. And I started looking around like, why is it? It was low. Why is it getting so loud? Next thing I know, silence. You hear a pin drop. And I heard, you don't need anything outside of me. Jesus. And I said, Lord, is that you? And I said, if this is you, God, you need to give me a scripture. Because you know I don't know the Bible like that. Mm. Isaiah 58. Okay, I go and read it, and the whole chapter is about right and wrong way of fasting. And I'm like, okay, like, it kind of hit, kind of not. Mm -hmm. But I knew that it immediately put a fear in me that I was like, I can't do anything that's going to alter the outcome I desire when it comes to my daughter and her life being in the balance right now. Yeah. So I'm not doing tarot or anything right now. And I told Jamar, I said, I can't do tarot or anything no more. Like, and he was like, really? Like, is that what you got out of God telling you that? You don't need anything outside of me? I said, I got the fact that God said, I don't need any tool, any nothing outside of him. I said, so I can't touch my tarot cards. I can't do nothing. And from that moment, I started just praying. That was the only thing that I did. Mm -hmm. And it wrecked me because... I can go pull these cards and get the outcome of what's going to happen. I can douse and see yes, no. I can ask these questions. It's, it's going to be accurate. I mean, don't get it twisted, guys. Like, it, there's accuracy there. Mm -hmm. But my pastor pulled me to the side one day and was like, yeah, there's power there, but it's not the power. power. Mm -hmm. And I was like, whoa. Yeah. And so... Just this past uh, <laughs> couple of days ago, I got pulled to the side by a part of pastor staff. And someone was like, can I please pray for you? God put it on my heart to pray for you. It was after our first revival night. Mm -hmm. And I, saw that. I was like, for what? I was like, what I do wrong? It's like, oh, nothing. Like, God just told me to tell you a couple of things. And one thing was, I'm supposed to pray for protection over you because the enemy doesn't even want you on their team anymore. They know that they can't flip you. And because of that, they now want to tear up your house, your home, your family. It's about to come after all your stuff. Mm -hmm. So we need to pray for protection over you. He was like, because where you're being called to, he was like, it's very scary. He was like, but you're being called to the place that you just came from. Yeah. And I was like, now you're going to use me to tell the people that tarot is wrong? Absolutely. Divination is wrong. Correct. And I'm like... Because who better to tell them than the person who... But I've been battling with this. Do you understand? Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not battling with where God has me and what I'm called to do at all. But I'm battling with, like, how am I equipped to tell... Like, I was only dabbling for maybe, what, a couple years. How am I equipped to... To tell this message to people that have made me only practice this. This is all they know. You know what I mean? Like, like, how am I going to do that? And I just keep getting reminded, like, I'm not doing anything. It's God. It's God. I'm not doing anything. I'm just a vessel. Mm -hmm. Like, I just have to make myself available and put on the armor of God every day to make sure that I can stand Period. It's in like the Moses. midst of everything happening. When he's going back and forth with God about going and setting the people free. Yes. And he's trying to tell them, God, but this, but the way that I speak and blah, blah. And God says, is it not I that give you these thoughts? Is it not I that opens up your mouth and use your tongue and tell you when to speak? Mm. And he lets him, like, you know what I'm saying? I think we could definitely get caught up in those moments of what am I going to do? And God is like, I'm just using I'm you. This, this is me. And us being willing to yield to that. So what you just said goes with the scripture that I read today. Because, first of all, you need to tell me where that is. 
um, in the Bible? It's in Exodus. My Bible says Exodus. Okay. Mm-hmm. But you just said something specifically. So I wanted to read this. This is Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 26 and 27. I will make your tongue cling to the roof of your mouth so that you shall be mute and not be one to rebuke them, for they are a rebellious house. But when I speak with you, I will open your mouth and you shall say to them, thus says the Lord God, he who hears, let him hear. And he who refuses, let him refuse, for they are a rebellious house. So the fact that you said that God told Moses, like, I'm going to open your mouth. I'm going to tell you what to say. And mm-hmm. then this is saying the same exact thing. Like, I'm going to open your mouth. I'll, I'll make you mute when I need you to be quiet. Mm-hmm. I'm going to open your mouth when I need you to say something. But also know that I'm going to have you say and do these things to a people that are rebellious. Yes. Yeah. And that will not hear what you have to say. But I'm sending you anyway. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't do what I'm calling you to do, them falling will be your fault. Yeah. And that's why I always tell people, obedience over outcomes. Mm. Being obedient, like you, you don't need to be worried about what the outcome is going to be like. You have to worry about just being obedient to God and doing what he says do. I just told somebody this the other day. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I'm like... I need to take my own advice. Yeah. <laughs> I literally just told somebody that the other day. Like, don't worry about the, what's going to happen on the receiving end. Because mm-hmm. as long as you do what God told you to do in that moment, like, yeah, you, you've won. Because you don't know. You may be there just to plant the seed. And the Bible says that someone comes to plant, another one comes to water. Mm-hmm. But it is God who makes it grow. mm so if you may just be there to plan, you may never even see, like how you said, you'll come, you'll speak into somebody's life, and then later on, they'll come back and be like, remember when you said X, Y, and Z, and all of this happened, mm-hmm. but you weren't there in their life prevalent to see all the growth that was happening right. in between. Right. You just look back and see the fruit. You just look back and get the confirmation. You just look back and get this, because you may have planted it. Mm-hmm. Someone else comes along to water it, but it is God that does the growing. So it is God and whatever person you're supposed to speak to, to... Um, to plant that seed in them so that they could begin to wrestle with that or someone. And it may just be one person that comes and say, yeah, I am going to drop this. You're absolutely right. I do know what you're saying. I do know that that makes me feel, or there may be some people where they've only practiced tarot card, like you said, because that's all that they've known Mm -hmm. until you come along and say, no, I tried that, but let me tell you about the real power. Man. Cause when I tell you, my husband is a witness and he says it all the time. Like I've never been this at peace. Hmm. The whole time of me practicing all those things was to know and learn more so I could be at peace. Because I felt like I've always been that type of person where I didn't like to be in the dark. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I like to know what's happening. I'm a control freak. (laughs) I need to know what's going on at every turn. I don't even like being surprised. Like for birthday, stuff like that. Like my husband would be like, yeah, I'm not telling you what we're doing. I'm like, no, you need to tell me. I need to know what to wear. I need to know what to pack. I need to. He's like, relax, right? (laughs) But I felt like the more that I knew about what was to come, the more peace it would give me. But all it did was I was just going further and further and further down a rabbit hole. Like mm-hmm. I would learn one thing and then it's like, oh, I need to learn this technique on how to tap in. And then I'll mm. do this and it's like, oh, now I need to learn this technique or whatever. Oops, what's up? Mom, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> so it it led me to learn all of these different things but I still didn't really have answers. So then I would have to do my tarot cards every day because I need to know what's happening today. And then I need to know mm. what's happening tomorrow. And then I need to know what's the theme for the month. And then I need to know. And I still didn't have peace. And the whole time I was searching for peace, when I finally came to the like the end of myself and I really was like, all right, God, I surrender, um, which happened for me this past April in my car. Um, I said, God, I've just been in search for peace. I just want peace and rest. That is it. I can't do this on my own. I don't know what I'm doing. I've tried everything in my power. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I said, so I'm scared too, but I serve it. And then I just broke down crying before I could even get the full word out of my mouth. And from that day, literally every day, God has been giving me a word. For myself and for the people. Mm-hmm. And so 
you know, even this podcast, you know, was birthed from God telling me to do it. That's why it's named that. Um, if it was up to me, I wouldn't be doing none of this, guys. Just <laughs> l- let's be clear. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me say this to the camera. If it was up to me, I would not be doing any of this. Okay. I missed my job. I missed the money that was in my account because of my job. <laughs> okay? okay. I missed my medical insurance. Okay. I miss. There were some perks to having my job, but guess what? Um, what I have learned over the years is that every time God came in and was able to get a word to me, even when I wasn't always hearing and seeing him clearly, all those times he was able to come in and give me a word and I did it, even when I was reluctant or like not sure, it always panned out to be correct. Mm -hmm. So when God recently told me, you need to quit your job and you need to start a podcast, I said, okay, who would have known that my last day was the day that this podcast dropped? God told me the date that the podcast needed to be done by before I I even knew I was going to quit my job. Then a situation happened, and then I was like, okay, I need to quit my job. And I put in a one-week notice. Something told me to do one week, not two. I put in the one week, and they were like, okay, so your last day is going to be June 14th. I was like, <laughs> the, it's just how the you day work. that the God told me to drop the podcast. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. So that's how I know, like God's hand is all over it. And I don't want my hands over anything. Okay. I take my hands off. I want God's hands to be all over it because I know for a fact, if I'm obedient, even if it takes years, if I'm obedient, whatever's on the other side of what God has for me, like it's, it's there. Mm-hmm. I don't even have to worry about like, when is it going to come? I just know it's there because I'm being obedient. Correct. And I always love uh, one of my other favorite verses when God's like, I would have it that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, okay, well, and everything, you want me to have an abundant life. So whatever it is that you're calling me to do, even, I always say, if it it doesn't look the way that I want it to look right now, then this can't be it. Right. So then I can't be done. So that I can't. And that's what keeps me through all those seasons, like you said, Lord. I miss Girl. my job. I miss the money. I miss the, <laughs> and yeah, but you'll you'll look up and be like, oh, he brought me through that whole season and every bill was paid and I never missed a meal and I still have clothes on my back. Mm-hmm. And everybody ate and everybody and all the peace that you had through all of that. Yeah, because every ending is just new beginning. Uh-huh. And that's something that I used to tell myself, but I didn't fully believe until now. Yeah. Um, Because when I was pondering that thought, like endings are just new beginnings. Every ending that I've had has just started a new journey, right? Um, but even when we pass on, it's just a whole new beginning. Like we go into a whole nother realm and another existence, you mm-hmm. know, with God. So there's never any end. And that's the beauty in it. It's just like his word. You could read it a thousand times. And always glean something. But different. every time you come out of a new situation, some other piece of wisdom, some other piece of revelation just hits you like a ton of books. Mm. Like, oh, okay, be like, oh, so that's what else you meant by that. Mm-hmm. And it and it just never stops. So it's right. like that that never ending love story. So he never stops speaking. You know what? Speaking of God speaking, um, something that you do every day that I really admire is that you do a daily devotional and you share it on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, she likes to go on there and like post like whatever book she's in for the day. She'll put a long caption on it, like a picture of her book. How how did you get into that? What inspired you to start sharing it on social media? Um, so before I would do it that way, I would go on like walks mm-hmm. and then I would post me walking and I would always add a scripture. Okay. Um, cause I always just felt like I never wanted to, no matter what I did or where I'm at or whatever, because God is so prevalent in my life, you can only have a conversation with me so long before I'm going to start talking about oh, God. Oh yeah. Cause, so, <laughs> it's cause com- in cosmetology school, be like, what's up? Praise, praise God. I said, praise God. Praise the Lord. Well, <laughs> And I'll just point and be like, all him. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm always giving the credit back to him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And so uh, on my social medias, I was just like, okay, so what way can I always highlight God? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just be true to myself and who I am. And I just did not, I don't ever want to be shy about my love for him. Right. And so when I'm walking in the morning, that would be the time I would pray and I would talk to God. And at first I would just like do the morning walk and add the scripture. Mm -hmm. And then it became a thing where it's like, yeah, but I got more to say than just this. I have more that I want to do. Mm -hmm. So at first I thought, then I started just slowly kind of like 
um, every now and then just sharing like my thought on a scripture or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then it went from there to I would like post the matter of fact, it's crazy that you asked that because I was just kind of going through my camera roll mm -hmm. and seeing how at first I still would just kind of put like a small paragraph. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, now I'm going to share my whole thought on this. Mm -hmm. And the more I did that, it was like the more transparent and vulnerable I was able to be with God. And then at first, I didn't even think people actually cared or was like really paying attention. Mm -hmm. And then people started responding to that. Got it. And being like, oh, did you miss today? Or did you do it today? And it would be like, oh, I don't, I didn't post every time. Mm -hmm. But it was like, no, no, we're getting there. And so now people would read it and then be able to open up and have conversation about nice. it and whatever. And so I just told God after that, I was just like, oh, however you want to use me, however you want me to speak. However you want it is that you want me to get through to people. And so now I've just been trying to invite people into my daily walk with Christ. And mm -hmm. that's just where that came from. And Man. That was just this. Girl. So I have this love-hate <laughs> relationship with social media. Yeah. So I think it's hilarious that, you know, these are the channels that we're being called to. Um, but I don't think it's... Um, I think God is being strategic as well, just because of the mm -hmm. generation that, you know, frequents mm -hmm. social media and like, this is one of the ways that we're going to have to reach them. Um, but one thing for me that has been challenging, two things, and this is my first time saying it out loud. Um, there have been times where God has told me to share something and it doesn't get a particular response. And so then I find myself checking my social media every two seconds. Like, are, are they liking it? Are they, is anybody reposting it? And I literally have to pray in that moment, like, God, like, take me and my ego out of it. Like, I, I really don't want this to turn into me feeling like I have to create particular content mm -hmm. to hook people. I really just want to focus on being obedient. Like, that's truly my prayer every day whenever I feel like that. Mm -hmm. But because I'm human, yeah, you know, I still fall into that, like... I really want people to get what I'm saying. I really want people to enjoy. But at the end of the day, like, not everybody's going to come with me on this journey. And I need to be okay with that. And like you said, obedience over what? Outcome. Outcome. And so I've been doing that without even knowing, like, you know, that moniker existed. Mm -hmm. But it's it's rough. That's my first thing about social media um, that has, like, been challenging for me lately. And I've been actively praying about, like, keep me humble. Keep me in a posture of, like, obedience only and blinders on, not caring about what people think or have to say or if they're engaging or not with this content. Um, but then the second part is that content creation is such a huge deal these days. And there has to be some sort of production. Like, mm -hmm. it has to be produced. It has to be presented in a way that is eye-catching, mm -hmm. you know? And so I just took a content um, creation course. Shout out, of course, shout out to uh, Mr. Howard, um, a yeah. dope dude. I met him through my homeboy Lucky. At yeah, church. I'm definitely want to take that class. Yeah, um, great man of God too. But um, one of my questions I asked him was, how do I balance, you know, making content but it's still being authentic and feeling authentic. And he was like, well, you're sharing who it is that you really are. I'm like, yeah, but I feel foolish setting up my phone, walking to a building to get that I'm walking somewhere, you know? But I just have to trust that if I'm obedient and sharing the message, it doesn't really matter how I package it mm -hmm. as long as I just stay true to the Bible, to the scripture that God has given me. If I'm not putting any extra sauce, that's cool. Extra sauce as far as production is fine, mm -hmm. but not altering the word. Yeah. And so I've been trying to like lean more into that. Like, yeah, I can create this content. This will be fun for me. I'm a creative person. But at the end of the day, the messaging is always going to be sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where I'm at with it. Yeah. I know um, one of the things. So I don't know one time I went to post a devotional mm -hmm. and for whatever reason, it just wouldn't post. Girl. And I was like deleting Again, mm -hmm. deleting again. And I'm like, now nah, I'm in the same house under the same Wi-Fi. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay. And 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 it's happened a couple times. And so the first time I was just like, whatever, God, we will we'll just post it later. Mm -hmm. And then it happened again another time. And then, I, and then it hit me like, oh, no, you're trying to say something. So let me sit down. And then it was just like, after a while when I was mm -hmm. posting the devotional, I started 
reading to be like, okay, let me hurry up and read this chapter so I can say something just so I can put it out there so people can uh, see that I'm doing it. So people can see that I'm being consistent. Mm-hmm. So people can see that like, oh no, that's the thing. She's really committed to this. Yep. And it is so crazy to be worried about a people who I wasn't even concerned with in the first place were even paying attention. Right. Now I'm worried if they sitting at home calculating whether I'm really doing this every day. Right. And so then I, it was just like, and God was like, don't forget that this is between me and you. Don't forget that this is our relationship. Girl. Don't forget. So now I, I had a thing where like, because at first it was like, oh, it had to be in the morning. Mm-hmm. But realistically, sometimes it's not. Right. In the morning, especially with what we do. So now my call time is 5 a.m. Now I still read maybe on my phone, but just not in that way with my tea and my books. Right. And the, you know how I wanted to be laid out. And it was just like, um, and then not even being afraid to invite people into that. Like, right. hey, y'all, today the Bible's on my lap with the Starbucks tea. Right. Like there, there's no, what, what do we call it? An aesthetic. There's no aesthetic. Yeah, you're not curating the moment. Yes. And so, Pete, I'm glad that you said that because... Yesterday when I was reading, I was just like, okay, I can I can catch this as content or whatever. But I was like, I'm not going to do this every time. So I just saved that video and I'm like, I'm going to use that same video. Just so y'all know, if y'all go to my Instagram, you will see the same video. But I'm going to put what I really genuinely read for that day over that same video. Because I'm more interested in reading the word and, and gleaning from that and sharing from a pure place versus saying that I read to post. Or mm-hmm. saying that I read because I need to share this at this particular time. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But the curation part is done. It was an authentic moment. I filmed it. But I'm not going to now then film myself every time and set it up every time. Mm-hmm. like Because that's that's when it begins to be like, like yo, this is OD. Like, I really don't want to take a pod. I mean, a tripod with me everywhere. I don't want a selfie stick. Like, I just don't. Yeah. I really don't. And then even, I was almost even boxing myself in because then it had to be this particular book and this chapter a day. Now I am like that as far as like when I shared the devotional, Mm -hmm. but now it was like, okay, God, we did this, but I don't know. I'm not done talking to you yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not done reading yet. I'm, I, it's something else you still want me to, to like, to say I'm not finished. So now I was okay with being like, yeah, y'all today is not just a chapter. It's one through three, one through five. And this book is short. We're going to read it all. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I have to go back and like revisit to say like, oh, no, what was you really trying to tell me then? Right. So it's just been a beautiful like thing to now bring the social media part or, you know, did you guys just see the part that's posted? Yeah. But for me in the background, like the relationship I have with God now to be like, mm-mm, we still trying to talk to me. You still want to say. Uh-huh. It's like, all right, here we going. We and, I, and now I find myself having those like conversations with him. Oh, yeah. And being in a space where it's like, God, am I really hearing you? Do I hear your voice? Are you really speaking to me? Like, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. I was at work and now I'm like, oh, I'm really having conversations with you. Yeah. Facts. And not even like just to see how it all got there. But it stemmed from me just wanting to be open about with people about that scripture or yeah. sharing that that message. So I think it's all who you are. Mm-hmm. When you're an authentic person and you are. And right. if you're a person, people are just automatically know. You'll get the couple of you who are brand new people who just don't know that, but they'll, mm-hmm. right. they they'll learn as on. they watch. Right. Right. Exactly. Man, I love this. I feel like there's one more question that I have and it's probably not even going to match like with the flow of this, but I really want to ask because I've experienced some things. I used to, okay, let me not say used to God. I'm sorry. Um, I'm a musician. Mm-hmm. I do music as well. I used to sing, write, all the things. And you being in the hair industry, um, you're around like entertainers and stuff like that too. When people say that um, there's aspects of the industry that are de- demonic, it's definitely real. Mm-hmm. I've experienced some things. Mm-hmm. Do you have like a quick story that you want to share with the people about where you experience like, oh, God is not in this. And how did you navigate the space? Was there anything that you had to do in particular to like, you know what I mean? Lift that that spirit, that whatever energy off of it. Like, what is it? Then I'm going to share a story with you. Okay. Um, so, who? <laughs> For a long time, you would always hear about people talk about the dark side of the industry. Mm-hmm. But because of how I came in and the people that I was able to work with, mm-hmm. they were already like believers. Okay. So it took me a while to see. And a long time in my career because 
I was just showing up, believing. I don't even think I was like necessarily searching for it. And for a while I was like, what are people talking about? I just, I started to just feel like, oh no, these, some of these people are just like lost souls. They're really trying to just figure it out in, or whatever. And then some were, you'd be surprised at the, a lot of the ones who were actually believers, who were actually like, mm -mm, girl, you already know, I don't mess with that. I don't do that. I don't, mm. whatever. And so all because they don't necessarily speak all the way out about it. Right. They're. They definitely had a, a boundary line of things they won't cross uh -huh. till one day. And I was just like, Lord, I, I don't know. When I say both these two clients in a matter of one day, both of them were actresses. Mm -hmm. Same clients in the one day, just two totally separate times. Mm -hmm. One, we're bringing in hair. She wanted some individuals with mm -hmm. the hair that is going to come out. She wanted to use a... What is that thing called? Where they they light it up the smoke. To, oh, sage. There we go. Uh -huh. I want to sage the hair before we. Now you will have to know Larissa to know <laughs> know my personality. <laughs> it's just certain lines you're not gonna be with me. <laughs> what did you say? You first of all, I said, "Lord, fix my face." <laughs> 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 I said, um, because it's just sometimes you just go stand firm. And I said, is this the is this the time? Or am I supposed to stand up? You know what I'm saying? Like you right. said in that verse. Am I supposed to be quiet or what? And because I'm very vocal. So like a lot of times too, these clients have already been around me. Yes. And if I've you've you've gotten me on a Sunday after church or something like that again. God is such a heavy part of my day. If you say, how was your morning? Girl, it was good. And I was doing my devotional this morning and blah, 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 blah. Like yeah, it yeah. just flows because that's such the fabric in who I am. Yes, exactly. So, it, you know, this is not the first time you've been around Larissa. And so I said, like, you want me to pray over you and over that? And, and I clearly heard what she already said, but mm. I was just like, you know, to kind of give the signal that this ain't that. Right. I was like, you want to step outside? Do you need me to go outside or whatever? And it's just like, no, no, no. And they could sense the uncomfortableness and they just like go outside and everything. Mm -hmm. And when, um, and I was also with another friend who was working with me too. Uh -huh. She already knew. We looked, locked in, as we're braiding, we're praying. So wow. I already pray over the clients that I have, period. Right. And I, um, God does a weird thing where he tends to bring me people who are very creative people. Mm -hmm. And then they just like flourish, flourish in their career. And I know that I'm there mm -hmm. for whatever reason to make sure that the boundary is there to always remind wow. them that God is God, regardless of where it is that they are going. And so I, I, the people that I'm blessed to be able to, to do, I'm just like, Lord, this is crazy. Girl. Um, and so, yeah. And then the second one, and this is my first time ever seeing, um, this is not, I know this is not my first time seeing a witch. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I'm sure, you know, like you run into them all the time. You just kind of don't know, but this is my first time, like in action, full on setting up an altar, everything. Mm. People know when you are carrying the Holy Spirit. Mm. Um, and again, these clients have been around me before. So it was kind of like a, hey, guys, I need to be done at a hard six, at a hard five. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just like, oh, like, are you going to say you about to do a commercial or something like that? Mm -hmm. And it was never necessarily said what it was, but they were trying to make sure that it was a, a, a set time for us to be finished so for them to be able. But it started to run over. Okay. And when I started seeing the stuff being set up, I lock eyes with that lady. She lock eyes with me. At that time, I'm like, I know you see this look on my face. I step away. I ask, can I go to the bathroom? I walk to the bathroom. I pray. They take out the little stuff to do the little sound baths uh -huh. or whatever. I'm seeing like, and at first I'm like, okay, this whole sound bath, you hear that little music in, in when you get in the, in the spa or something. Mm -hmm. But then when you start taking out, it was like an angel and a little crystal and then all these little crystals they were putting around it. And when you start building altars and stuff, I mm -hmm. said, yeah, this is where you lose me. Mm. And so then, instantly, as I'm braiding, praying, that whatever it is or whatever that spirit is or something. Mm. So then I start talking about Jesus. <laughs> what you say, Louisa? I, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking to my, oh, I'm talking talking to to my friend. Brand? Okay. Yeah, I, start, I instantly, I said, you know what? Church was good last week. And I used that as the... It, as the, you know, mm -hmm. the vehicle to start opening the floor and to talk about Jesus and to right. talk about the power of the Holy Spirit or whatever. She was like going to, to like do the things. Then she just kind of sat there 
and wouldn't. And when I walked past, I remember just saying the name of Jesus. And then we was packing up our stuff. And I knew it just was like, yeah, whatever. Ooh, wait. So then I said, oh, so it's there. It's very, it's very much so there and present. But what I noticed is, um, and it was something even when you were going on your journey at the time that you said to me mm-hmm. when you came to speak with me. Mm-hmm. And I knew you were coming. I knew that you were coming. Mm. Um, because I just like I had seen it and I and I'm not one of those people. I'm not finna, you're my friend. I wasn't yeah. gonna be sliding in your inbox, you going to hell, you blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. That just it's not even leading with love to me. Mm. Um uh Say so I just again. was praying. Yeah, I was praying, praying. I never stopped praying for you. But I always said again, I wanted to have the correct verbiage when it was time for me to speak with you mm-hmm. on what it is God would want me to say to you. Mm-hmm. And it was, again, like in those moments, like, Laura, what is it that you would have me do? What is it that you would have me say? Mm-hmm. And what is it that you want me to see? Because um, we can't be ignorant of the devil's devices. And because he, he doesn't change. Wow. He just uses a different way to repackage what it is he's trying to present to us. And it's always going to be packaged beautifully done. Like, he's not coming in a horn with the two. You know Man, what I'm saying? How's listen. We doing? It's always going to come at what you think. Oh, but that's what I was saying. Mm-hmm. You were saying that uh, when you were going on there, you was like, yeah, I just felt like the spirit, it was like a spirit calling me to go this way. I remember mm-hmm. you saying that. Mm-hmm. And I remember when she was talking, this particular girl, and she was just like, yeah, uh, I just been kind of on this journey and I just been wanting to feel free. I've been mm-hmm. wanting to just be at peace. Mm-hmm. I've been wanting to just, and I just felt like my spirit. And I was like, this is the same thing. I, no one mm-hmm. jumps into these realms because they're like, I'm looking for the enemy. You weren't in there mm-hmm. saying, I'm looking to do witchcraft. I'm looking to, right. to be a part of this. You went in there purely to say, I'm, a, I'm on this journey and I'm, I'm looking for the freedom. I'm looking for the peace. I'm looking for that. Mm-hmm. That's our job to let them know what the ultimate peace is, who the ultimate love is, who Please. the ultimate power is. It talks about that in Timothy, that in the last days, people will, you know, deny the power thereof. Yes. And that's what that is. Is the people are not... You know, I mean, there are some people who are just flat out like Satanist and stuff yeah. like that, which is crazy because to believe into Satan, you have to believe in a God. I don't even understand. That part. But, <laughs> <laughs> right. but it, it it is just letting people know like the Holy Spirit is real. God is real. Jesus is real. And we're not going to be absent of trials and tribulations. Really, we're supposed to count it all joy mm. when we're in those things. And that's why he says that. But I believe as Christians and as we are coming into our identities and who we are in Christ, uh-huh. noticing that there has to be something that separates us from the world. Yes. The Bible says we are in the world and not of it. Yeah. But if we keep looking like the world and responding like the world or whatever, then how do I know your God is any different than what it is I'm doing over here? Right. The whole scripture too about salt and light comes to mind too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're the salt of the earth. Yeah. It's so wild. So I'm going to tell this quick story and then we're going to get ghosts because my phone is blowing up and I'm like, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Um, So my uh, interesting industry story, right? So um, I got invited on a trip um, out of the country um, with uh, a whole bunch of rappers were there. Um, One rapper in particular was the one that fitted the bill for this trip. So we go on a jet. Um, Amazing experience, all that. We land. When we land in this other country, we finally get to where we're going to be staying. I remember us being greeted with a butler who then has a suitcase that he opens up with all of the pills, powders, potions, smoke, (laughs) everything available. Uh, All of the (laughs) illegal paraphernalia. Okay. (laughs) And so they're asking, oh, you want this? You want that? You want that? I'm like, no, I'm cool. So, you know, everybody else partaking. Around this time, I'm in my 20s. So this Mm -hmm. is a while ago. Um, and I happened to be there with my boyfriend at the time. And so we're out there for like five days. So that was like day one. So I'm like, okay, they 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 with the, the, the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, second day, um, this one particular couple uh, approaches me and my boyfriend at the time. We're all just kind of talking, stuff like that. And um, then we're like, kind of like, they, they want to invite us mm-hmm. into their their mm-hmm. situation. And thankfully, you know, my, my boyfriend at the time was like, oh, no, no, no. Like, this is cool. Like, this is this is my fiance. Yeah. And so that didn't happen. Thank God. But then I'm still, now I'm looking at these people like, no. 
like, this is wild. Mm -hmm. is this person, I can't believe this. Like, I'm young. I'm like, I can't believe this person is into stuff mm -hmm. like this. Da, da, da. That's like day two, okay? <laughs> so um, probably like around day three, um, there's like a pool at one of the houses or whatever. And this particular night, I decided to do shrooms mm -hmm. with everybody else, right? I do shrooms, but because I'm paranoid and, you know, I'm a control freak, <laughs> <laughs> I sit on the side of the pool in a lounge chair. And so I have this view of this infinity pool. We're up on the top of this hill. It's beautiful, but it's nighttime. And so people are in the pool. Next thing you know, I start seeing visions. I'm sitting there. I look up into the sky and the clouds. I literally see gates. Sorry. <laughs> I literally see gates, like pearly gates open up. And like white horses on the sides of the gates. And I'm like, God, is this you? <laughs> I'm like, God, oh my God. And then I'm like, God, I'm so sorry. Like, yeah. What's going on? Because I then see a big face. But it's all shaped like clouds. Like white glowing, like golden glowing clouds. And mm -hmm. this gate and these horses and this face that I'm perceiving to be God in this moment. Right? So then I'm looking in the pool. And it was like some ladies in the pool, some men in the pool, whatever. This whole trip was like a whole bunch of couples. And two of the ladies in the pool, they start kissing. But then they morph into snakes. And they're like intertwining with each other. And I'm I'm sitting in my chair like this. Like, am I really seeing this stuff? I'm like, ah. Like, so I'm seeing them. Then there's a guy that runs past. He's screaming. And I'm looking at him. His head is like Satan, just his head, and it was fully on fire, and he's running through the house. He runs, and he goes to where the restroom is, and he, like, slams the door, right? And so the whole time I'm seeing all this stuff happen, I'm sitting in my chair, taking it back, and I'm like, okay, I just I just need my high to come down. I just need my high. <laughs> like, these <shrooms> is <laughs> like, I need to, yes. <laughs> so finally come down, go to sleep, wake up the next day. We're all at breakfast at the table, and... The dude, oh my God, I don't know what was happening last night, but I ended up locking myself in the bathroom. He's laughing at it. It's just so crazy. I'm laughing. At, I locked myself in the bathroom. I looked at myself in the mirror and I'm like, why is my head on fire? What? I had horns and, and I was wondering why my head is on fire. And I, I literally, I stayed quiet and I was like, you did show me that, God. Mm -hmm. In the midst of my mess, you showed me that. And you used that opportunity to tell me that what I was seeing was indeed real. And so ever since then, I'm like, I'm not doing shrooms. Because <laughs> we wrestle that against flesh and <laughs> We're blood. We're supposed to do it anyway. Uh huh. But um, there have been times after that where I'm like, I wanted to do shrooms because I was practicing my spiritual stuff, right? So I was mm -hmm. like, let me do it to see, you know, what I would see now, now that I'm like in control. Mm -hmm. But I never ended up doing them. Like it was always something happened to where mm -hmm. I couldn't get them or it just the opportunity would never arise. So yeah, like there are definitely people in the industry that are tapped into a lot of things. There are a lot of energies and spirits attached to them mm -hmm. that you have no idea, which is why it's so hypersexualized because they need to be able to engage with you in that way so those spirits can jump on you or into you. Okay? So it's very real. It's very real. It's very real. You need to stay prayed up. Uh -huh. <laughs> you need to, like, literally pray over yourself, protect yourself. Like, yeah. Seriously, because these energies also know or they're these entities rather they know who they can penetrate and who they can't mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that in a sexual sense i'm saying spiritually they yeah. know where there's an end and you know being one of the messages and you know pastor not pastor but a guest pastor that i chose spoke about closing the door that is such a real thing. You will never know the doors that are open in your life but just from you entertaining drugs, alcohol, mm -hmm. certain people, uh, you know, practices. Those and you will also doors. never know because they will never look like what you think. They will never You're look. You're not going to find out to let the... The rap parties, the event parties, when you in the bathroom, 20 people come running in because they all about to do lines. Right. And that was just a month ago. <laughs> That was just a month ago. I was like, they were like, are you God said? No, I'm okay. No, thank you. Okay, it's more than just a diggy party. You got to know when to say no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's even wild, wilder is that 
when you say no, they look at you like you're the crazy one. Uh huh. Like, oh, okay. It's not even it's okay. Like, it's so I, awkward. You have to be able to stand firm in that. Like, yeah, all right. No, then, I was really like, really. Mm. It was one of those. Like, mm-hmm. you sure you don't? Oh, okay. And then you looked at it as the weirdo the whole trip. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, okay. Don't we can't do nothing around her. Yeah. Yeah. Recently, in the the last devotional that I was reading, I started in Luke. Now I feel like I need my Bible. Um, but it's just quick because I know we're about to end. Mm-hmm. Um, dang. Now I have to go because it it brought me down on this tangent. Um, the Bible's talking about sexual immorality. Uh-huh. And I battled with lust. Mm-hmm. So I just kept going on this path because I'm like, it got to be more to just not having sex just because it's outside of the timing. And right. Because first of all, sex is a God idea. Right. So the enemy is always going to try to pervert what it is God calls good. Mm, that's a word. And um, and as I was like kind of doing some more research, because I went to go like just look up the Google definition of sexual immorality or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And as I was scrolling, um, I kept reading and it was just talking about how it was ide- uh, directly tied to idol worship. Mm. And I hadn't like even up until right now, like even talked to anyone about it because mm-hmm. I was like, I need to now I want to look deeper into it. And it mm-hmm. was just saying how in certain times it was brought up and not prevalent or not as much like in the New Testament as it was at certain parts in the Old Testament because it just wasn't something that people who were set apart from God, Mm -hmm. what they were like automatically doing. So like until you get to Sodom and Gomorrah and whatever, and then that became like a whole thing. And it was like, um, yeah, but they were all doing those as practices to gods that they were serving. Mm. And I was just like, huh. So this is why like, the enemy constantly is like driving, especially in our industry, everyone with the sexual desires, everything with pornography, everything with, and that's why it's such a battle and such a thing because it's the easiest thing to open up. And with people not knowing love and with people not knowing that, they will call lust love in a hot second. Oh, yeah. Especially if, like you said, you don't know what true love Mm -hmm. is, then you're going to base love off of a feeling that you get from an act. Yeah. And you won't even find value and where you should find value. Oh, Lord. I think we're going to end it right there. Yeah. <laughs> that was wild. Well, first of all, thank you so much for coming. I knew thank this, this conversation me. was going to be fire. I already mm-hmm. knew. So thank goodness. And um, yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for rocking with me thus far. Episode six, we here. I'm seeing that we have like a consistent flow of people watching the pod. And for that, I'm so grateful um, because once again, even if it was just one, it would have done its job. So I really appreciate it. Um, you want to end with a quick prayer? Yeah, we can. Okay. I want you to do it though. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's on the spot day. Yep. <laughs> now, dear most gracious and heavenly father, God, thank you for being great. Thank you for being mighty. Lord, I will always acknowledge that you are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords. Yes. Thank you for being a miracle working God. Thank you for being omnipotent. Thank you for being sovereign. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. God, I ask that each and every person that tunes into this podcast, God, that something is, is planted, Lord, inside of them, Lord, to want to turn their lives back to you or to come and say, God, how can I be saved? Or come and saying, God, how can I get to know you more? Or Lord, how can we increase in our relationship? Lord, I want to know you. Thank you for loving me. Lord, tell me about your love. Lord, I ask that you be with um, just Sherry for having me on here. Thank you for this opportunity to um, have community with her, Lord. And God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for keeping us. Yes, Lord. Thank you for getting us to this point. And thank you for what you are about to do next. Thank you, God, for being such a great God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Peace.